Cozy Moth Knits podcast. My name is Caitlin and I am known as the Cozy Moth Knits here on YouTube, Instagram, and on Ravelry. And um, this is a podcast dedicated to uh, my knitting endeavors, um, you know, my works in progress, my finished objects, you know, the standard knitting podcast. Um, and I'm just sharing my, my knitting um, excursions, if you will, with you guys and uh, getting to know you and, you know, having these bi-weekly visits with you all and getting to know you and um, developing friendships along the way. Um, so here we are, episode six. Um, a lot has happened <laughs> in the past two weeks in my little life. Um, so much so I don't even know where to begin. <laughs> I mean, like, now that I'm like, I say a lot's happened, but in reality, like maybe to most people it won't be. Um, so you might have noticed that I'm filming at night <laughs> and I apologize for the glare on my glasses. Uh, like, you know, the days are getting short, the day days are getting shorter. And this was the only time this week I had to film this podcast. So again, I apologize for the glare on the glasses. And for the, you know, the warm light, I'm not a professional. I don't have a ring light or anything, but, um, I figured might as well go for it. I'm like this, this darkness makes it a little cozy. I almost put my lamp on the floor so that there wouldn't be as much of a glare. And it looked like I was sitting in a dark room and I was like, this might work. Like this might be good, but I'm like, you know, you're not gonna be able to see, you know, the stuff I'm about to show you very well. Um, maybe another time. <laughs> maybe not a knitting podcast, but maybe more of like a vlog or something. Um, so what has been going on in my life? So, <laughs> um, the week after Halloween, something had come up in my life. Um, feel free to jump to conclusions. Some of you guys might already know what's going on. I kind of shared a little bit more on my Instagram uh, through private messages. Um, but I ended up staying home from work for half of a week. You know, don't worry, like, I'm fine. Everything's fine. It just, that's just what ended up happening. Um, thank God for, <laughs> I was smart and saved all my paid time off <laughs> at the end of the year. But, you know, that's how it goes. Um, so I was off work for three days. And um, did I use my time wisely? Depends on who you <laughs> ask. Um, my first day, I cleaned the house. <laughs> I cleaned up my house. I cleaned up my knitting room. I, you know, scrubbed the, you know, the tub, <laughs> like, you know, just random stuff around the house. Like I was putting off I'm like, well, I have no excuse not to do this now. So that was all done in like four hours. So what did I do the rest of the week? I sat on my couch. I watched Netflix <laughs> and Hulu or whatever. I knit. I caught up on the election results and that was all I did. And my poor school work, <laughs> I totally forgot about school those three days. Did no school work at all. Um, did it bite me in the butt a little bit? Yeah, but whatever, that's the choice I make. I'm living with it. Um, so I got a lot of, not, a, got a lot of knitting done um, in three days. Um, I expected to get more done, but I didn't. But I did get a fair amount of knitting done, which I will share with you. Um, it's also, you know, November, which means it's time for Christmas. <laughs> Some people might disagree with me. I know a lot of people who have already like put up their Christmas decorations. My mom, my, if it, for those of you who know me and my family personally who are watching, uh, hi, by the way, thank you for watching. Um, my mom is the queen of Christmas and I'm not even exaggerating. She, she goes full blown Christmas. Like she has like seven trees. Everything is decorated to the nines. It's a winter wonderland <laughs> and she does an awesome job. And I, I can aspire 
I only aspire to be as Christmassy as she is. Um, but she was putting up Christmas stuff and playing Christmas music before Halloween. Like the week before Halloween, she already had two of her Christmas trees up. <laughs> and you know, more and more trees are progressively, you know, being placed around the house. And it's beautiful, of course. Um, and I'm sure it's less stress on her instead of putting everything out one day or over a weekend, like now it's like progressively. But I did go over to her house on Halloween and she had Christmas music playing and I'm like, let's celebrate Halloween first, <laughs> okay? Um, if I had it my way, I would already have my Christmas stuff up. I'm already, I was as I was getting ready for this podcast, I was, you know, I had, um, you know, the, I can't remember, uh, Have Yourself a Merry Little Christmas by Ella Fitzgerald stuck in my head. And I'm like, you know, be popping along. And I'm like, oh, I can't wait for Christmas and to like get everything out. Um, my husband is a self-proclaimed Grinch, <laughs> which is very different spectrums from where I come from. I come from a home of Christmas loving people. Not that my husband doesn't love Christmas because he does, but my husband is very much like, don't put out Christmas decorations before Thanksgiving, <laughs> which I get. I mean, like I normally, I've been getting away with doing it a little bit before Thanksgiving because I recently I've been hosting Thanksgiving at my little home, <laughs> which I love to do. And in, in my head, Thanksgiving isn't Thanksgiving without that precursor to Christmas, meaning the tree is up, things are decorated, Christmas music is playing on Thanksgiving. Thanksgiving is pretty Christmas. <laughs> for me so that's just how I go about life so I don't have anything I don't have Christmas stuff up yet I've bought Christmas stuff I'm preparing for Christmas um I'm already planning two Christmas parties <laughs> responsible you know during the time of the the vid I've heard people call it uh Rona or the vid uh they're responsible parties they're not you know, I, I live in a t I live in a tiny town townhouse. There's only so many people I can have in my home. But I'm already planning Christmas parties and you know, finishing up my Christmas knits. Um, and like I just got my first advent calendar, my first yarn advent calendar. So I'm super excited to start that. And you know, I'm having plans for this channel for Christmas. And I'm just excited. I'm excited for Christmas to come. I've got my, you know. My Christmas scented candle it's like pine tree or something but yeah so that's 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 exciting I don't know where I was going with that but it's exciting <laughs> it's an exciting feeling for me oh there's just the planning the Christmas parties um you know reaching out to people seeing if this is something anyone would be comfortable with you know just figuring it all out so first order of business is the giveaway <laughs> and this giveaway this week isn't as big or as crazy as, or compared to my other giveaways um which are big but for this giveaway last episode i prompted you all to um to uh post down in the comments what you do to get cozy like right now i'm cozy i'm very cozy right now even with this light gives the cozy vibe i got a big big old black cardigan it's just an an American Eagle airy cardigan. I got my sweatpants. I got my slippers. Um, it's just cozy, cozy vibes tonight. Um, so I asked you to tell me what makes you cozy or what you do to get cozy because of the cozy acorn giveaway or <laughs> because of the cozy acorn cow. And this giveaway, Judy Jewel of the Autumn Acorn is graciously giving away two free patterns of her pajama cardigan, which we will be knitting during uh, the cozy acorn cow. So I'm going to get this pulled up. Uh, thank you very much for all your submissions. Um, I did it on Google Sheets this time because you could randomize. Um, and I figured that would just add a little bit more interest to this, I guess. So I'm going to hit generate. And we got number 37. Okay. Number 37 is Knit Crow Sew. <laughs> and uh, she, congratulations by the way, she writes, um, hi, I love your show. I've been wanting to do a cardigan, knit a cardigan or create a cardigan. Um, I wear shawls and PJs to get cozy. Um, whoop, uh, perfect 
uh, perfect day is pillows. Sorry, perfect day is pillows on couch, yummy coffee, YouTube, and a big basket of knitting. I can't wait to try this, and I can't wait for you to try it too. And congratulations for. Uh, I'm all messed up. Sorry. Congratulations for our first winner in our little giveaway. I'm gonna highlight you. So two patterns. So we got one. And generate again. 14. Exciting. All right. Number 14 is Carolyn O'Grady. Congratulations, Carolyn. Um, she says uh, uh, to get cozy, she uh, uh, curling up under my Mickey Mouse velour blanket and watching Downton Abbey or, Downton Abbey or Gilmore Girls. Ooh, that sounds luxurious. Anything velour is luxurious. I love it. Um, I have tried both Downton Abbey and Gilmore Girls. Um, I am horrible with names. <laughs> uh, so that was kind of why I stopped watching Downton Abbey because there's so many characters and I just couldn't keep track of it all. <laughs> um, so, and I, and like, that's why I also can't get into Game of Thrones either. There's like too many, too much stuff going on. And um, I tried Gilmore Girls. I was talking to my friend about this the other day. I'm like, I understand the appeal of Gilmore Girls. I really do. I understand the cozy vibes, the dark academia. Like, I I understand it. You know, like, small town in, like, what is it? New England, Massachusetts? I don't know. I totally get, I get it. But I just couldn't get into it. I tried. I really did. It just wasn't for me. But... I can appreciate it. But congratulations again, Carolyn and uh, Nick Croso. And uh, so what you're going to do, and I talked to Judy about this, is you're gonna email Judy at this email down below, and she's gonna give you the option to um, either her gift the pattern to you on Ravelry, if you use Ravelry, or she'll email it to you, whatever works best. So congratulations to you too. Um, looking forward to seeing what you do with this knit along. Um, and again, uh, with the knit along, um, there is a Ravelry group. I set up a Ravelry, Ravelry group, <laughs> um, the cozy, or, uh, the cozy acorn cow. Um, I'll link it down below, of course. And then, um, uh, we'll also be posting, uh, on Instagram using the hashtag the cozy acorn cow. Uh, last time I tried posting something through that, um, I don't know if Instagram is still doing this. I haven't checked, but like all hashtags were like blocked from being used because of the US election and people were trying to send misinformation and it's like really are going to affect the knitting community. Like really people <laughs> like, I just want to share my cozy acorn cow information with my people. <laughs> like, uh, so annoying. This is the world we live in. Right. Um, so again, congratulations, and I'll talk more about the knit along, uh, later on, but for now, let's work, oh, sorry, I know people don't like, um, cracking knuckles, but I crack my knuckles all the time, especially since, you know, you know, we knit, we do things with our fingers, and I know it gets on people's nerves, but, like, every 20 minutes I have to, like, crack my knuckles, and my knuckles aren't big, people are like, oh, you crack your knuckles, and, you know, you're, your knuckles are going to get big and, um, you know, gross looking. Well, maybe that one, but, um, I don't care. <laughs> like I, I need to be comfortable. Right. Um, the more I've been knitting, the more I've noticed that my wrists are hurting and my elbows are hurting, which you wouldn't think your elbows, but they hurt. So I work, I work in, I work at a physical therapy clinic, so I should just ask them like, hey, can you give me some exercises? I really need to work on that. Um, so let's start with finished objects. I actually have some finished objects this week. Um, none that I'm wearing, but the first thing we're gonna do is these pair of socks. I have them on sock blockers. They're not blocked, but I just put them on the blockers. Um, because they look nice. And uh, my husband's birthday is on November 15th, the day that the Gozy Acorn Cow starts and the day that this podcast comes out. Um, so I knit him a pair of socks because um, 
I knit him a pair of socks and some Bumblebee Acres yarn about a year ago and he really likes them so I figured I'd make him another pair. So here they are. They're kind of fun and funky, right? Uh, they are the Austin socks and that is by Kay Litton of the Crazy Sock Lady Designs. Um, so, and uh, has a fun little knit and purl pattern here, knit and purl detail. Um, a slip stitch heel and gusset or heel flap and gusset, which I didn't think I would like heel flap and gussets, but they are my favorite heel by far. Um, I don't mind knitting a German short row heel or anything like that, but I definitely prefer this, the reinforced heel. Um, so the yarn is, I kept the it's hedgehog fibers, um, in, uh, just some re or the hedgehog fibers uh, sock yarn and the colorway is called um, Salty Tails. And um, my husband picked out this yarn when we were in Seattle. We were at, um, I believe the yarn store was just called the Pike Place Yarn Store or the yarn store on Pike Place or something, but it was in Pike Place or in that general area, like not in the actual like farmer's market, but like it was like a street up. But like that general area is just called Pike Place. Right? I mean, I'm not from Seattle, but like the way things are laid out, I just, I, just, I don't know. I'm not from Seattle, but I was there. <laughs> I was there in person. Um, and that makes me an expert, obviously. But, um, but I really like the color. Um, but yeah, he picked it out. He saw, he's like, ooh, this is cool. It's pretty. Um, so I was like, you know, like it's, you know, neutral enough that I could make him a pair of socks. I mean, like he'll wear, you know, whatever, like if I give him a pair of like pink and lime green socks, he'll wear them. But, um, <laughs> but you know, these are neutral enough that they could be wear around the house socks or they could be dress socks. You know, I'm, I'm happy with how they turned out. I think they're very nice and they look good on the blockers. Um, I, I enjoy the pattern a lot. Um, yeah, it's, super super easy um it, it looks intricate but it's not um pattern is very well written um it'll be linked down below of course um the yarn is great um i don't know what else to say about it uh but i'm happy with how they turned out i knit it i knit both these socks in about a week but i also like had those three days home from work so i had that time to um to knit them um he knows they're his birthday socks by the way because i had finished them and i was so excited i'm like look how cool these socks look on the blockers aren't they cool like because he saw me knitting them obviously he's like oh cool what are they for and i'm like they're for someone just someone <laughs> and he's like are they for me and i'm like yeah they're for you <laughs> like happy birthday <laughs> i'm like but you can't wear them until after my podcast or until your birthday. I'm filming this a couple days before his birthday. So I haven't blocked them, but I don't know if I'm going to, because like, you know, like I, I saw someone had put on Instagram, I can't remember who it was, I'm sorry, but it was like, you know, do you block your socks? And some people were like, yes, absolutely. You have to block your socks. And others were like, you know, what's the point? You're just gonna put them on your feet. Like you make them to fit your feet, right? Or be like a little bit smaller so that they're snug around your foot. So what's the point? And as someone who dislikes blocking, maybe I won't do that, <laughs> but maybe I will just, you know, because it's a present from my husband. Um, and I really should, I guess, just to like make sure the woven in ends stay where they are supposed to stay. So that's finished object number one. Ugh. Take a tea break. This is a mug that I got, that my parents got me for Christmas years ago. It's a venti size mug from Starbucks. And um, it is, la it's like almost 10 years old, but it is my favorite mug. Um, it does have a little chip, so I'm like right here. So I'm like afraid that like one day I'm gonna be pouring my scalding hot water in there and it's gonna like fall apart. <laughs> um, but I love this mug to death. It is like my baby. <laughs> Um, like no one can drink from this mug, only me. 
highly recommend if you can get a big old mug like this, even if it's just for tea, because I would drink like at that time in my life, uh, I would drink cups and cups and cups and cups <laughs> of tea. Oh, side note, the sign is back. <laughs> I, it was brought up to me uh, by someone who loves me very dearly and uh, someone who, um, like, what's the word? Someone who, someone who loves me very dearly and someone who happened to binge watch all of my podcast episodes in a Sunday afternoon, which is, you know, that's, I appreciate it, but you didn't have to do that. <laughs> like, that's pretty exhausting to stare at me for over five hours, stare at me talk about my knitting. <laughs> but she had texted me and was like, what happened to your sign? So it's back. <laughs> I think in my last episode, you could see it was down there. And I just keep, I just forgot to put it up. But um, so the sign is back. Another Target purchase. Target, Target's amazing. Target's great. And if you have Target in your area, then you know. Um, so yeah. Next, we'll move on to works in progress. And this works in work in progress, I'm sure you're tired of seeing. <laughs> and these are my, and I have to keep looking over here every time. They're my Mete socks by Arna and Carlos. I have one sock off the needles. Um, still needs to be blocked. These definitely needs to be blocked. Um, the ends need to be woven in, obviously. I need to fix, this is, like every once in a while I'll do a really good German short row heel and I won't have any problems, but other times like I have a hard time. You you know how it goes, there's always, whoop, you know, that hole in between. I've tried so many times and I, and I go back and I just patch it up and they work out just fine. Here's one, um, maybe I'll put it on a blocker. And these blockers are um, Sunrise Grove Knittery, uh, sunrisegrove.com, um, uh, Pacific Northwesterner, <laughs> uh, I think they're in Vancouver, Washington, I believe, um, but yeah, uh, so here we go, here's how they look on, except, you know, this, this leg is very long, um, I'm gonna go into more detail about these in the future. Um, but like these, the legs to these are also very long. But the other ones that I've knit, the legs aren't as long, I don't think, or I don't remember spending as much time on them. But these are one of the Christmas socks that I'm giving away to uh, someone in my family. And as I mentioned before, I don't think anyone in my family or the people who I'm giving these socks to, I don't think I'm pretty sure, 90% sure they don't watch my podcast, uh, which fine, I don't care. I'm not offended, right? I'm not offended. <laughs> um, but uh, I'm giving these to them. They have little tulips on them. Um, they're fun to knit up. They're easy to, to knit up. Uh, my first, the first sock, I was just like, I wasn't appreciating the pattern as much. And I was like, this is boring. I just want to get it done. But now that I'm like almost done the second one, I'm literally like three rows away, oof, three rows away from knitting the, um, I'm gonna stab myself in the eye, three rows away from getting to the toe, which I will finish tonight. I, I really wanted to finish this today. I was itching to do it, but it didn't happen. Again, another Arna and Carlos pattern. Um, I can't recommend their patterns enough. Um, I love um, the, the they have been my introduction to Norwegian patterns and I'm really enjoying them. I love the look of it. I love the, is it Huga or Higa? I've heard different ways of saying it. It's um, H-Y-G-G-A, right? Or, you know, H-Y-G-G-E, I think. 
I've heard I've heard people say huga and I've heard people say higa and I think it's just from because like as we know there are a lot of n knitters and knitting podcasts from Scandinavia and they all have different dialects and say things differently and I don't I don't know I've heard it different ways um but anyway, I love the the huga or higa <laughs> ness of uh, Norwegian patterns. Very cozy, and you know this doesn't look cozy, uh, but to me it's cozy. I love the repetitiveness of it, and um, yeah, it's just comforting. Um, yeah, I had I was knitting this in public the other day, and someone came up to me and was like, "What are you knitting there? A birdhouse?" <laughs> Which I thought was funny. Uh, like I could see where they could, where they would think it was a birdhouse. I guess I guess the colors and, but I I I thought that was funny. Like a birdhouse. I'm like okay, <laughs> but whatever. Um, so there's that, and then my other work in progress is a second party top. <laughs> Uh, I love the way that my, uh, my party, t my Halloween party top came out, the one that I wore last episode. Uh, it was knit up in, um, oh, I forgot to mention the yarn that I'm using for, you know, backup. The yarn that I'm using for this is Schackenmeyer Premium Silk. Um, that's obviously in their, in their fingering weight. Uh, I can't remember the names of the colors, but I can link them down below. Uh, they were just the, the colors suggested by Arna and Carlos. And as two knitwear designers, I trust the colors that they chose for this. And so I went for it. So anyway, um, party top. I only just started it. I'm, it's a top down. Um, so, and they, they're on tiny needles, which makes it look smaller than what it really is. Um, so I'm only just starting the, the neckline, um, and I wanted to knit a black one because, um, I want to have a black one to wear over this plum colored dress that I bought. I, I kind of, I took pictures or my sister took pictures, um, of the dress, of me in the dress in the orange-ish colored, um, the Bumblebee Acres Harvest Moon colorway. Uh, that I used for my last party top. And I love that dress. It's like a 1950s or 50s style like swing dress. And the sweater looked perfect over it. So I wanted to do a black version and then wear that over that dress for Christmas. I was looking, I was considering a black yarn with like some sparkle in it. But then I decided not to go that route because if I get, if I just do a black, it's more versatile than like a sparkle and I'm not a sparkly person. I have my sparkly moments but I'm just not a sparkly person. If I wear sparkles it's like on my nail polish <laughs> but or whatever. Um, but yeah it's party top. Um, probably by next episode I'll have at least the cowl done. Um, I can't recommend this pattern enough. It is so easy um, and I love the way it turned out. Um, and I am knitting this in uh sorry uh Barocco right Barocco ultra wool it's 100% super wash wool I have used this wool in the past this yarn in the past I mean and I like it um I don't have anything negative to say about it um I like that it was super wash because I would definitely wear this black sweater more than I would my um, my Bumblebee Acres one. Uh, I don't believe their DK was super wash, um, but I know it's super wash. So if I so when I wash this black one, it won't be as much of a problem. You know what I'm saying? Um, so yeah. That's, that's what's going on. That's what I have on the needles right now. Um, I do have some dream knits. Um, I do, before Christmas, I want to finish two more pairs of socks. Um, but 
we'll see how that goes because I'll also be doing, well, it's going to happen because they're Christmas presents. They have to, I have two more pairs of socks left to knit before Christmas, basically is what I'm trying to say. Um, they'll get done. <laughs> That's my goal. My goal is to have them done even before the beginning of December. So I have two weeks. Um, it'll happen. <laughs> if I put my mind to it, it'll happen. Um, so yeah, those are my works in progress right now. Not super exciting, but um, it's something. <laughs> um, so from that, we will move on to the the knit along. Uh, just information on the knit along, I guess. Um, I kind of have a funny story. So um, the pattern for the um, the pajama cardigan, which is a pattern by uh, the Autumn Acorn, Judy Jewel of the Autumn Acorn, um, that she put out a few weeks ago or a couple months or a month ago, I believe. Um, she had reached out to me and gifted me the pattern, um, which I thought was super, super sweet of her. She's just the nicest, <laughs> the nicest woman and so sweet and so supportive. Um, so, and then I reached out to her and I said, you know, wouldn't it be great, you know, is this a good idea if I hosted it along for the end of the year and we used your pattern? And she got excited and was like, yes, we have to do this. Um, so uh, we will be knitting the um, pajama cardigan and the I bought the suggested wool. I'm the type of person who likes buying the suggested wool. So like sometimes like when it comes to things like like a sock, like a non-color work sock, obviously it doesn't matter. Or like some some sweater, like the party top, like whatever. But sometimes I like find the suggested wool, especially when it's wool that is new to me. Uh, the wool she suggested is um, the Rosa Pomar Mungo. Um, and this is a 50% wool, 50% cotton blend. And I figured that would be very interesting to knit with because um, I never knit with something. I've knit with wool and cotton, but not a wool cotton blend. So I figured that'd be interesting. So I ordered, <laughs> I'm like, I don't know why I did this. I must have been like sleepy or had a couple glasses of wine or something. And I was like, I'm gonna order straight from the distributor. I'm gonna order straight from Rosa Pomar. During the time of COVID, <laughs> I'm gonna do it and it'll be fine, right? Um, so I ordered it and you know, the whole website was in Portuguese <laughs> because it's a Portuguese um, you know, brand. But I've seen so many people knit with Rosa Pomar yarn, and I was like, well, this is also a good opportunity for me to, to knit on some of their yarn. So I did that, and my husband picked out the color, and um, it was like another orange. <laughs> I know you guys are tired of seeing me in orange. <laughs> um, orange or rust or whatever. Um, but it was another orange color, and I was like, it's going to be beautiful, it's going to be fun, it's going to be funky, it'll be great. Um, a couple days go by and I'm like, when is that yarn coming? <laughs> I'm like, hmm, like it said, you know, like, oh, if you're ordering this internationally, expect it to come in between a week or eight weeks. And I'm like, I don't have eight weeks. <laughs> like, and it's also COVID, so that might change. Um, or it might be longer. So I, so I was stressing out a little bit. And I was like, you know what? To be safe, I'm going to order from a U.S. distributor. Like, order from a, a store within the U.S., uh, which I should have just done in the first place. <laughs> I don't know what I was thinking. Um, I get, yeah. So I was able to support a uh, distributor uh, or a yarn store, or whatever, uh, website, online website. Uh, they were from Ohio can't remember the name off the top of my head I'm sorry um but and I got you know this and this was the color that Judy was wearing um in the pictures that she posted on the pattern and I was like well this I like this color like I like brown I don't have any I don't have much brown in my wardrobe so I was like well this will be it'll be fun um 
Judy did warn me though, she says that this is a little tough on the hands compared to wool, which I can feel that. I totally understand that. Um, so have, you know, you know, keep some, you know, hand balm close by. <laughs> uh, so, so the yarn came in, came in a big old, big old pack of sweaters quantity worth. And then they, I ordered eight skeins and they sent me nine. I don't know if they did that as like a courtesy or if it was a mistake, but now I have a crap ton of yarn. But two days later, what shows up in my mailbox, but another sweater's quantity worth of Rosa Pilmar Mungo uh, yarn. But, and I think this color was number 12. Yes, number 12. So now I have two sweater quantities worth of this yarn. Um, maybe I'll make another pajama cardigan in this color or I'll make a different sweater. Uh, there is another sweater that I have in mind that I would like to knit at the beginning of the year. Um, I, this might be fun to knit with. It's just come to me. I, I know what I'm going to do with it. I know what I'm going to do with this and I'm excited for it. Um, but yes, now two sweaters quantities worth of yarn and you know, lovely. <laughs> but this was a lot more cost effective than my last orange sweater. <laughs> I think a sweater's quantity worth of this um, ordering from the distributor, this with the shipping, I also pay for tracking. So it cost me like $96. For this one, I think this was like 86 within the US. Um, so yeah, I'm excited to work with this. It'll be fun. Um, but you can use whatever yarn you want, obviously. Um, you know, Judy recommends a wool cotton blend. Um, I had someone, I think it was either a YouTube comment or, um, a, uh, or an Instagram comment where someone said like, oh, I would love to knit this pattern, but like I'm allergic to wool. So I only have um, acrylic yarn. And I'm like, and I just replied to them and said, you know, go for it. You know, like, you know, whatever makes you comfortable, the, you know, like, I don't know, like, uh, what am I trying to say? <laughs> like, I see like patterns on Instagram all the time. If you like search the hashtag for it, like if the pattern calls for, you know, fingering your weight held double with mohair to get a DK weight yarn. Um, a lot of people do that, but people also will just use DK weight yarn or whatever and whatever different type of, you know, fiber that you prefer. Um, I don't want to exclude anyone from this knit along. Um, cause I know that there's definitely people out there who are allergic to yarn. You know, one of my best friends is allergic to yarn. Um, so I know that's a real thing, obviously. Um, so just because the pattern calls for this specific yarn, you know, you don't have to use this specific yarn. You can use what's in your stash. You can use, you know, a different worsted weight um, yarn that you would prefer. You know, it doesn't have to be wool. It doesn't have to be cotton. Um, it could be acrylic. You know, it could, it could be made out of unicorn skin, <laughs> you know, uh, unicorn hair or horse hair or whatever. You know, do whatever you want. Um, I, that, that's what's fun about a knit along is seeing what everyone does with this pattern. Um, I'm not a pattern writer, obviously, or not yet. I don't know. I'm not a pattern writer, but I love looking and seeing what people do to turn these patterns into their own. And I see pattern writers respond to that. And it's not, and it's 99% of the time I haven't seen, or not, you know, I've never seen a negative response to a modification of a pattern, you know, that, that, you know, when obviously when the pattern is contributed to the pattern writer, it's not like, you know, I knit a cozy classic raglan with the bubble sleeves and called it my own, you know, and said like, oh, this is the cozy moth knits raglan because it has bubble sleeve. Like, no, like I was Jessie May's pattern but I just made a modification that she suggested, like she put that in her pattern. So yeah, anyway, everyone is welcome to join this knit along. If you have the time, if you would like to use whatever yarn you want, 
as long as it's worsted weight and as long as it meets gauge, you know, obvious, obvious stuff. Um, don't feel like you are excluded from this pattern be, or from this knit along because you're allergic to wool or don't like a wool cotton blend or would rather, you know, have, you know, you know, yeah, don't feel like you can't do it. And also someone had reached out to me on my last episode and said, you know, um, like this would be my first, like, 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 so it was like along the lines of, is this a good pattern for beginners? And in the long run, I said, yes. Um, I, I haven't knit it, but I have read through the pattern. Um, and I like how Judy uh, wrote it up. It seems very easy to, under to understand. It is easy to understand. Um, and I, th what am I trying to say here? Um, don't let, I also, this is like, I've talked to two different people about this and they, they both kind of have the same thing. Um, so the only thing I said that might be challenging is the fact that you have to piece this cardigan together, which this is, this will be my first experience doing this. Um, I've only knit two sweaters and <laughs> this will be my first cardigan and, um, so this will be an interesting challenge for me too, but I don't think that should scare you guys. <laughs> um, I, I understand why, because I spent years telling myself that I couldn't make certain patterns because it was too hard or it was intermediate or advanced. Um, that you're holding yourself back. Um, yes, someone, again, someone recently asked me, so like, what would you suggest to, what would you suggest to move from beginner patterns to more intermediate patterns? Um, and I gave them some options, you know, moving from hats to shawls and shawls to sweaters and so on. Um, but we shouldn't let those uh, difficulty levels scare us because the more I knit, the more that I learn that knitting is just knits and purls and increases and decreases. And that's all it is, you know, like, like there's like, like even if you look at the most intricate lace patterns or very intricate color works or, um, yeah, color works, uh, like it's just, at the end of the day, it's just knitting. It's just a knit stitch or it's a purl stitch or it's an increase or a decrease. And if you can figure those out, which you, you know, if you're knitting hats, you know, I learned this now. If you're knitting a hat or if you're knitting a shawl, you can knit a sweater. Like you can knit a cardigan, you can knit socks. Like it's, it's not impossible. Like it, it isn't too hard to make. And like, I'm, I'm not trying to belittle anyone. This is obviously to your own comfort level. If you don't feel like you're ready to knit a sweater, go ahead, but don't, don't continue to tell yourself that you can't do it because I wasted many years of my life saying that I couldn't knit anything past a hat because I didn't have that skill set. And now I, now my favorite things to knit are socks and sweaters. And, um, yeah, so don't, don't let your insecurities hold you back your knitting insecurities um, because you know you have the ability you have the skill you have you can do it you know like it's it you know don't don't look at this pattern and say can't do it can't do it it's you know like oh I have to you know piece it together can't do it, don't have that skill set. Like, no, you can do it. I know you can. And I'm not just saying that because I'm hosting this. I'm not just saying that because I'm friends with the person who made the pattern. I'm saying that because I know you can do it. And um, again, not trying to be little, I'm trying to uplift and encourage because this is what we do here at the Cozy Moth Knits. Um, I almost calls it, called it the Cozy Class of Raglan. <laughs> um, this is what we do here. We uplift, we encourage. This is a happy space, right? Um, so that was a long introduction to the knit along. 
So back to what I was trying to say in the beginning, but I went off on a long tangent. <laughs> um, so reminder that today is the first day of the cozy acorn, uh, the cozy acorn knit along where we will be knitting the pajama cardigan and I'll be getting these on the needles on the 15th, hopefully, if not the 15th, then definitely the 16th, pardon me. Um, so I'm super excited to knit this along with you guys. The knit along is running from today, November 15th, the day that this is posted, uh, to the last day of 2020. <laughs> um, in 2021, we can see it, you know, it can't get any worse, right? Um, we, uh, you know, November 15th to December 31st, knitting this cardigan. Um, it's, I feel like it'll be a nice break from a lot of our Christmas knits. Uh, cause I'm already, as much as I love Christmas, I'm already tired of knitting Christmas related things. Um, again, love Christmas time, but I feel like this will be a nice break from the reds and the greens and the whites. You know what I'm saying? Um, so here we go. Uh, we have a Ravelry group, as I mentioned earlier, it's going to be linked below. Um, so join that group. Go introduce yourself. Um, I have a sp space for introductions and a space for uh, yarn resources so, so we can share uh, what types of yarn you will be using to knit this, um, to knit this uh, cardigan. Um, I already, and I gave a bunch of resources where you can buy this yarn. Uh, uh, I listed where you can buy it in the US, where you can buy it in um, Canada and where you can buy it I, where you could buy it in, in England um, and where you could buy it in, you know, obviously Portugal. Um, and then obviously it's a space for, you know, if, if I have someone from, you know, Denmark <laughs> watching, if you want to add to the group like, oh, this is where you could buy this yarn in Denmark. Um, or say like, oh, like these are great, but this is the yarn I'm using. Um, it's more cost effective or whatever. Um, it's, it's a space where we can share and we can all share our progress. Um, so yeah, so there's the Ravelry, group, the Ravelry group, and then I also have the Cozy Acorn uh, Cow hashtag on Instagram, Cozy Acorn Cow, and um, uh, that's probably where I, like, I, I need to be better with my Ravelry, Ravelry presence. <laughs> um, um, I'll probably be posting on my Instagram first and then going to Ravelry within the hour or whatever. Um, so if you want to follow that on Instagram, go ahead. Um, there will be prizes, by the way, um, for this, uh, for this knit along. And, um, I, as the weeks go by, probably the next podcast or the podcast after, I'll show you what you could win. Um, uh, Judy has graciously given, has, has donated some of the stuff from her shop to give away. So not only is she, are we knitting her pattern? She's, oh, she's giving you guys 25% off of the pattern, which is so generous, but she also sent some goodies to give away. And I'm super excited for that. Uh, there's going to be two winners. Um, uh, you know, a first prize, which will be a larger package and a second prize, which will be a little bit smaller. Um, but again, we'll get to that when we get there. Um, I'm not sure how I'm going to choose it quite yet. Um, I will figure it out as I go along. This is my first knit along. So please be gracious with me. <laughs> uh, please be patient and please be gracious. I'm trying. I'm still learning as I go. But I am super excited for this. Um, I, I'm almost as excited for this as I am for Christmas. <laughs> um, so yeah, that's what we got going on here. Um, and yeah, I'll be posting um, posting about it on Instagram as well as on Ravelry. And um, I look forward to seeing you guys' uh, progress on this. Um, again, link link to the pattern will be down below as well as the 25% as off code for the pattern as well. So we're almost done here. <laughs> almost done. Uh, there were a couple things that I, there's one last thing that I wanted to 
bring up something that has been that I've been thinking about because I want to do something different for the Christmas season because like I mentioned I do have a yarn advent calendar and I'm like hmm that would be interesting to document but like how would I do that like how what's the best way to do that and after talking to my sister um who you know she's my go-to for all things you know marketing or whatever um uh, self-promotion um in a in a good way you know um she we agreed that i think i want to do vlogmas in december um not daily but i think weekly where um not only will you get to see my uh my knits and i'll show you you know what i get in my advent calendar um every day and uh, what I decide to do with that, I don't know if I'm going to knit socks or if I'm going to knit um, the uh, Habitation throw, I believe it's called. Uh, I see a lot of people using that, but I feel like that'd be fun to make a Habitation throw out of all the minis. Um, that would be cool, I think. Um, and I'm excited for the theme too. I'm not going to give it away. Um, I, I'll talk about it in Vlogmas. Um, but I'm excited for it. I, I like... I opened up the box, but I obviously didn't look at anything yet, but I'm, ex I'm so excited. Um, but yeah, I think I'm going to do Vlogmas. So in addition to me showing you, you know, like real time, like me knitting, I think, um, like showing you how I knit, what I'm working on instead of me just showing like the in between, um, you know, talking about the advent. I also want to like show you little snippets into my personal life you know, show, I want to show you how I decorate my home, you know, what holiday things I do during this time. Um, you know, obviously responsibly, but I feel like that'd be fun. It'd be something, I will do it alongside of the podcast. I'll still do podcasts in December, obviously. Um, but I feel like it would be fun to do weekly, um, week, weekly, like a vlog style vlog mess. Um, so if that's something you're interested in, comment down below and let me know. Just a little something extra during the holidays. I know a lot of people do that and sometimes it can get overwhelming. Like, oh, you know, I mean, watching, you know, subscribe to a hundred, you know, knitting podcasts and 30 of them are doing Vlogmas. <laughs> but I, I always enjoy Vlogmas, you know, different, um, creators that I watch. I feel like it's, it's fun. So thank you for taking the time to visit with me this evening or day or, or morning or afternoon or whatever you're watching this. It's evening for me, um, obviously. <laughs> uh, but thank you for visiting with me. I love visiting with you as always. Um, I'm excited, as I have said a million times already, I'm excited to start this knit along with you and to get to know you guys a little bit more through knitting. And it's like our own little, I've never been part of a knitting group, like an in-person, you know, knitting circle or whatever like I've never been part of that so this is like the closest thing I have to that um so it'll be fun to get to know you guys and see what you're doing and what um you know what spins you have or what takes that you have on this pattern and what you decide to do with it um thank you for letting me talk to you for an hour <laughs> as I have been doing bi-weekly and thank you so much for watching and subscribing and commenting and messaging me on Instagram and commenting on my posts and um, I just love interacting with you guys and um, it really brings a lot of joy to my life and you know in ways that you don't that like I, I can't explain um, so thank you again so much for watching. Uh, stay safe, uh, keep knitting, and I will see you all later.